Hi, I'm Jody with Wellspring Solutions, and I am here at the Creative Aging Network. We're so delighted to be able to partner with them during our Thrive program and offer self-care activities like painting classes with a teaching artist. It's so important for caregivers and their loved ones to have access to relaxation and fun and creative expression. So we hope you enjoy this experience. And if you would like to learn more about opportunities for you to thrive, please check out our website. Hi, I'm Jennifer Donnelly with the Creative Aging Network here in Greensboro, North Carolina. Uh, today I will be teaching a watercolor workshop and watercolor is one of my favorite mediums. I have a lot of experience in it as a mixed media artist. And so we'll be learning new techniques, exploring color, fun, and the creative process. So um, I'm just going to show you what I do today and how I have fun. Um, with this process and I hope that it will be fun for you but this is a very relaxed type class um, if you have any questions please interrupt me say hey hey wait a second I you you got ahead of me there I want to see you do that again can you explain that process to me a little more feel free this is an interactive class so if we were in person that's exactly what we would be doing so I am just great with doing that today here so let's go over the supplies that you have that were in your bag to make sure that we're all on the same page. So I'm going to go ahead and switch my camera over so that you can see um, what I'm doing. And I'll show you. There's an overhead camera. So you will be able to see exactly what I'm working on and everything that I do. And um, you should also be able to see me in a little square with the front camera up front. So if you can't have both, I suggest you have just the overhead camera so that you can see everything that I'm doing. So let's talk about the supplies that you have. You should have two pieces of paper, um, your palette of watercolors, and um, an extra palette to mix the paint on. If you don't have that, then um, a piece of paper will do. A water container, because it's watercolor, I always tell people that the water and your use of the water is as important as your use of the color. In fact, more important because it's through your use of water that you're actually able to control the color. The water comes first. You should have several different brushes, a bigger brush um, and several smaller ones. And so um, now some people do like to tape down their painting um, to a board or a table. And this is because the watercolor paper that you have as we're working will buckle a little. Um, some people go through the process of sizing the paper. We're not doing any of that today. But, um, and I'm not going to tape down my painting either. Um, once the, the paper dries, and this is a sample of what we're doing today. Um, every time I do this painting, it's a little different. So I want to encourage you to put your own spin on it. Um, add, you know, elements that, that you might like and the title of the the workshop is a simpler time and I think we've all seen rural scenes like this where there's a barn and maybe there's animals and a tree line and fields and wheat and um, grasses growing so you can just kind of draw from your own experience and add anything that you want um, into this you can add different colors maybe it's a different time of year that resonates with you um, maybe it's a different kind of sky. Maybe you want more blue in that. So anything that you want to do to make this your own is fine. In fact, I encourage it. So um, I'm not going to tape mine down. As I was saying, um, once you're finished, if um, you're concerned that it usually dries pretty flat, you can just take a sponge and wet the back of the picture and put it between pieces of wax paper and a heavy book on it, and it'll be just as flat as it can possibly be. Make sure all your supplies are together and out and, and accessible to you. And then we are going to start to play. We are going to practice several techniques today that we'll be using in this painting. And so I'm going to show you, as we practice the techniques on this paper, where I use them in this painting. So that might help um, a little bit. So we're going to start with wet on wet. And that is exactly what it says. It's wet paper, which will wet that first, and then wet paint. 
Now, the hardest thing, I think, for people that are using watercolor is to get the right consistency of the paint and the water. That is, so it's nice to have paper towels handy. In fact, I have some right here. Have some paper towels handy just in case we get a little too much water, we can just lift it up, or a little too much color because that is probably the thing that most people struggle with the most in the beginning with watercolor is that they don't know how much is too much. With watercolor, less is, less is more. You want to start um, very lightly. You want, if you look over here in this painting, these very light, shadowy, I call them like shadow painting. Very light, hints of color, shadow. That's what your first wash looks like. Because you can always go darker. You can go as dark as the paint will actually go, but you want to get there gradually and just kind of take your time. Now the white, in, um, and this is where watercolor differs from other media. If you're using acrylic, you can paint over it a hundred times. You can paint over it all day long and have a different painting every single day because it covers. With watercolor, your paint is transparent so you can see through it. Also, um, if anything that, we don't use white paint that often, so anything that is light has to, it's called saving the white of the paper. So we want these light areas to be the white of the paper with very little wash. So the first thing I want to do is just kind of play with the wet on wet technique. And I, as I said earlier, it's water color. The water goes on first, the color goes on next. The water, the color will follow the water. The best way to control the color is to limit where you put the water. So I like to put the water only on the part that I'm painting at this time. So I've added a wash here of just water. And I'm gonna hold this up so maybe you can see it a little better. If you can see the reflection there of the light on the paper, you'll see. Now I'm going to add some color. So I'm just going to add some blue because um, I want you to see this. So the paint is following the water. And I could put it right along this edge. And you see that it doesn't go up, travel up here. It doesn't travel down here. It stays right here in the center because it's only where the water is. It's not going to go anywhere where there's not water, unless I deliberately put it there. Um, so this is a wet on wet technique. It's a lot of fun. You can get some really fun techniques here. And when I'm using this technique, I consider myself to be more of a facilitator of the art. It's almost like the water and the color are making their own art and I'm just watching. And I will tell you, there's something very satisfying about watching the paints and colors run together and just create whatever it is that they're going to create. So I'm going to take a little bit of red now and I'm gonna to add to this right here so that you can kind of see how they'll run together and just let them do their thing. So I would like for you to try that. Try the wet on wet technique. Take your larger brush and wet your paper and then add just a little bit of color and see what happens. You can practice adding other colors. Um, you just want to be careful um, of the colors and how the colors, the way they mix together because they will blend. So here I added a little bit of yellow here. So you'll see that that's going to turn green as it runs together. Now, you can see I've got a little puddle of water there. Sometimes I like those puddles of water and sometimes I don't. So you can just lift up just like that. And then just go back with a clean brush and move the paint around. Now I have just a little bit of paint on my brush and it's from the, the color that I've, I've put on here. So I'm just going to touch the dry parts of the paper and that is what your first wash can look like. See how subtle and soft that is? Very subtle. Okie doke, so we have the um, wet on wet technique right here. So if you've been playing with that, how's that going? 
that's fun. Now you can add other colors. You can go a little darker just to kind of get an idea. But as you see, I just went a little darker. So look at what's happening here, the way the paint's traveling to the water. It stops right there on the edge of that line. So that's how you control where your paint's going to go. You control it by the, the dry paper. So for example, if I were to decide that I was going to paint um, a green tree line up here, I touched the wet paint with my brush so now it's going to all run together. So if I didn't want that to happen, what you would want to do is just kind of keep that above that line right there. And then once the paint dried, I could go back and add what other color I wanted in there because these two areas are separating them from each other. For the most part, I kind of touched it there, but anyway. So this is your wet on wet technique. So you can see down here where I had just a little tiny bit of color in water. It's very subtle. Um, so that's where you start your layering process. So let's say I wanted to start and add maybe a brown layer over top of this. The blue, the very soft, subtle blue will still show through. Now this is wet on dry. My paper is dry. That area has dried. And so you don't get as much blending of color because each color is, is kind of drying in its own time. But that's where you get the layers that show through. And it's just like we have these beautiful layers over here with the yellow, the very soft greens and blues, and then the brighter yellow over top and um, the green. Some teachers will teach you that you do one color at a time. You do a yellow layer. And then maybe you do like a blue layer, then maybe add some more green and these types of things, depending on what it is that you're painting. I do that sometimes, depending on the painting. With this one, I think it's more fun to just kind of go back and forth between colors, as long as we're controlling where the water is. So I just wanted you to see this is all wet on wet. Um, this is up here, mostly wet on dry. I started this with the wet on wet. I left the area where we put the barn in later. I left that area dry. So the barn is put in with a wet on dry paper. And so what I want to show you now is a technique called dragging. That's what I call it. I don't know what other people call it. But that's what I call it. And that's how I made these grasses down here. So while the paint is wet, and this is a fun little technique, while the paint is wet, and I have a good bit of paint here, so this is where I'm going to show you. You can take a clean brush, just a, and just have it wet, not dripping wet, but it, it's wet and it's clean. And then I can just drag from the bottom here where this color is without adding any other color and just pull the paint like this. I call this the dragging technique, not drag on, dragging. And um, I just bring it up this way. Now what this creates, and you can't see it right now because um, it's still wet, but when it dries, you'll have, it's almost like a lifting technique. You'll lift some of the paint up. And so it's like the grass is created in a negative space. It's like the color is around the grass and it makes it a little lighter. Um, it's just a really nice effect and you can kind of start to see that a little. So practice that. Now though, I'm using a, a pointed brush. You can use a flat brush and just use the flat edge if that works better for you, a smaller brush, and you can just kind of hold it and pull it like this, but I'm very lightly touching the paper. The harder you press the brush, the thicker your brush stroke is going to be. So if you want a light brush stroke, like the grasses, then you would only lightly touch the paper. So you can kind of see where I'm doing that here. And when I pull through, you see it leaves kind of a white spot down here with the grasses. Actually, I'm really kind of liking the way this looks with the blue colors. It looks like a kind of a marsh uh, alongside the water. So yeah, just continue to do that. That is really kind of, kind of nice. So I want to show you um, another technique, but I want to give you some time to really just play with that because that's how we're going to create the grasses. 
And once this area was dry, then we'll go back with another color, like I did here with the brown and the reddish brown. I mixed some red and brown together and just go over some of those areas. And, um, but we would do that once it was dry because otherwise, if we tried to do that now, it's going to run everywhere. We don't necessarily want that. Although I will show you something, it's kind of fun. Um, so let's say I wanted some of these to be just a little bit of color here. I'm going to take some brown paint, just a little bit. So when I, when I want to make sure I have the right consistency of paint, you want to make sure to wet your paints with some water from your brush. And then I like to go either on the lid or on a palette and just have like a little puddle. It looks a little bit like this. See that little puddle right there? It's not thick, heavy paint. But um, when I, so when I pull it out, you can kind of see the consistency there. I'm just going to touch briefly and watch it run to some of these areas because this is a little wet. And so it's going to stay right there. And then you can add a little bit more water to it if you need to. And it will stay. It's still, you can see, not going any of the areas that were dry. It's only going to the wet parts. It's just, it's just, the more you practice that, the easier watercolor will be for you. So, as I said before, when um, I was putting this and dragging this color through, where you can see where my brush strokes are because it's kind of a, a light stroke through there. This is a lifting technique. So we're just lifting and dragging. So if I decided that this was too dark and I wanted to lift it, and we're going to do, we do some of that in here um, as well. I will just wet my brush, dry it off on a paper towel, and then press hard, lift, clean it off on the paper towel, lift, and I'm just dragging it around the paper right here. And so that is a way, if you feel like you're too dark in an area and you want to lift it up without touching it with a paper towel, um, now, your paper will have, you can only do this so much. Watercolor paper tends to have a lifespan with this. Um, so you can't do a whole lot of it. Um, but the better quality the paper, the more lifting you can do. But that tends to look a little bit like a reflection right there. And all I did was just water a clean brush and lift the paint back up. So just some, some fun. This is all technique. And so you may come up with some of your own techniques as you're, as you're doing this. So give yourself permission to play and just have fun to try these. I'm just showing you these now because we're going to, when we start this painting, we're going to be using these techniques in here. One other thing that we're going to use is salt. So you should have little packets of salt. I actually have a giant bag of it here. But you should have little packets of salt. So I'm going to do a wet on wet area down here with a darker color because I want you to really be able to see how this looks. This is one of my favorite techniques. In fact, everybody likes this technique. It's kind of like I, when I tell um, other people, I'm like, yeah, it's magic. I'm going to create some crystal effects here. So I'm going to just put just a lot of paint here because I want you to see how this works. So that's, that's pretty dark. So I'm just going to add a little bit more water. And I'm just going to take a little bit of salt and sprinkle it on top of here. And we'll use this technique in some of these areas down in the field. And just let it sit. Now the salt creates kind of a chemical reaction um, with the water and the paint. And you get a really interesting effect. And so I'm just going to, it's running there. Sometimes you can use these little runs too, see what happens. Like I said, there's something really satisfying about watching paint run. Not watching paint dry. That can be very frustrating. But watching paint run is a lot of fun. Just to see what it's going to do all on its own. But as this salt starts to um, dissolve here, um, it will leave like a little crystallized effect. And um, so I just kind of leave it. Don't touch it too much. But it, it's just a really, really interesting. Think about like starry nights or snow. Um, I like fields, kind of like the 
maybe fireflies, bugs, um, pollen, like this time of year. Um, and so one other thing that I want to show you that we will use is the splatter technique. And I'd have to say, I like the salt, but the splatter is my all-time favorite. So while I do, is I use a smaller brush. I get the paint really wet. So I'll add just a little bit of water here. Actually, a lot of water. You want the paint not to be kind of gooey, which can happen with watercolor, um, but just really wet so you can roll the brush around in it. So there's a lot of water on there. And I hold my finger out like I'm pointing and just tap over top of it. And you'll see very different the splatters where the paint paper is dry and the splatters where the paper is wet. Now, if you have an old toothbrush handy, that works really well too. Anything that happens that you don't like, you can just lift and leave the shadow of it there, like that. And then you can see it interacts differently depending on how wet the paper is in some parts. I do have a toothbrush here, so I'll show you this later um, if you wanted to try it. It gets a little different effect with the splatter. So I'm just gonna show you this real quick. So I'm doing the same thing. Paint is very wet, just touching it, the brush to the paint, and then I'm just going to splatter it. So you get you know, smaller splatters like that with using the toothbrush. So I use both in my paintings. And we do have some splatter technique over here and around the bottom because there, I think there's some like little flowers and things that might be showing up in here. And that's a great way to, to use that. Then you can go back with your small brush and um, maybe just kind of expand on that a little. Maybe I want this to be kind of a, a bigger flower. So I might just use a little red paint and just kind of go with what happened with the splatters and make it work for you. So everybody ready to start and paint our rural scene? Let me check our time. Great. So we have about an hour for this painting, so we'll just take our time. What I'm going to do is move this one over to the side and I'm going to put this in front of me. And um, that way, if I want to try out a color or practice a technique, I have my, my other paper over here. And I'll let y'all in on a little secret that um, sometimes what happens over here is every bit as nice as what happens on here. I have plenty of these paintings that are in frames. <laughs> and these were my, you know, what if kind of paintings. They tend out to be a little more spontaneous and there's not as much pressure. So, um, you know, just kind of keep two going at once. It also, if this, we need to take time for this to dry. And um, like I said, watching paint run and colors form and patterns is a lot of fun. Watching paint dry, not so much. So we can always go over here and practice on this other sheet while this is working. And that always works for me because it keeps me engaged and I don't get distracted and end up doing something else while this is drying. So that's just a little, for me personally, the way that works. So I'm gonna take a little drink of water here before we go further. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to paint wet on wet. So I am going to decide where my horizon line is on my paper. Um, a rule of composition, you don't want it to be directly in, you don't want to cut your paper in half ever. You've probably heard the rule of thirds with composition, and if not, that's fine. I think it's just something most people naturally do. So I'm going to go up and leave about one third of the top of my page dry. The bottom two thirds is where I'm going to add my yellow wash, and we're going to start with a yellow wash. So I'm going to clean my brush. I'm going to be using my larger brush. I'm going to get my yellow paint very wet. And then I'm just going to, now yellow is tricky. If yellow mixes with any other color, it's no longer yellow. So just keep that in mind of where you choose to mix it. And it's really easy to get yellow on your palette. Um, and another color mixed in on your watercolor palette. You can just wet it and use a paper towel to kind of lift up any other colors that get in there that you're not crazy about. So I've got my paint, yellow paint wet. I'm going to clean off my brush and I'm just going to wet my paper. Now I'm going to add a tad bit of color 
um, here only because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing and it's hard to see when I'm just using so I'm adding a little bit of yellow to mine but that's just so you can see where I started my horizon line right about here not halfway and then I'm just going to bring the water down and wet the bottom part now you'll notice in this picture that I've left some areas white the white of the paper the best way to keep them white is to not put any water on those areas so as you're adding your what your um, water wash just skip some areas in there and I'm not actually bringing it all the way down either our grasses and things are going to go in there so I'm just going to kind of work this area and I do have some areas in here that don't have any water and that's how I can control the paint not getting on there and keeping them keeping it kind of white so I'm adding more of the yellow now I want this to really come down this way we're going to add some yellow paint to our wet on wet technique down here so we have water just in this bottom area there's nothing up here the top part is dry and again um, it's about a third of the way down from the top not halfway we're trying to, to stay away from the halfway mark just to keep things more visually interesting so I'm just moving this yellow around on here now if you feel like you have too much water um, if you feel like it's the color is just kind of getting away from you and it's just pooling and you have too much that's what paper towels are for you can kind of start to, to lift some of that up so you can always go back um, and add a little more now I'm going to take some yellow onto my palette and I'm going to wet the orange and add a little tiny bit of orange to my yellow this really brightens up the yellow and it just kind of and I'm using a um, horizontal brush stroke here just kind of lines across just like this so you can see the yellows and the oranges kind of running together just making some really cool patterns and in some areas you'll just kind of go with what you've got there you may have turned some of those areas into clumps of um, grasses you can lift this is the lifting technique a little bit get some extra water out of there and I'm just moving the paint around with my brush but do you see how I've kept it very light I don't want to go too dark too soon so while we've got the paper pretty pretty wet I'm going to add some green and yellow together and I'm going to start to incorporate some more kind of green areas in here and just kind of touches and we'll go back and add some dark areas and some shadow areas But this is very wet so the paint is just kind of doing its own thing but I like it so far how's everybody else doing it can get frustrating if you feel like you have too much paint and too much water and that's when we do the lifting technique that I showed you where you just wet your brush clean it off go back and lift up clean your brush again and lift up and you can also do that if you think you have too much water and it's getting away from you okay so I kind of have the basis of my field here not not too much you know just the basis so now I'm going to go and work while this dries above the horizon line up here I'm going to work on my sky now you can make your sky anything that you want you can make it um, I use some grays on here and you can do that or you can add um, a blue sky 
So if you want to use grays, the best way to do that is to take not light black. Um, some people, because black tends to make your other colors look dirty. So you'll see in my paintings, even the most, the darkest areas, that's not black. This is purple and brown in here. And this is um, just a darker gray that I made mixing blue and brown together. So I think that you'll, you'll be a little happier with that color. So it looks a little bit like this when um, I've mixed those two colors together. And I am just going to go up here and try kind of a wet on dry. So the paper up here is dry. I have not wet it previously. So I'm just adding just brush strokes. I'm still using my big brush, just some brush strokes of color. And I'm leaving the area where my barn is going to go completely dry. We will paint that in afterwards. So I'm just leaving the white spots and the white areas of that. Now, so this is the time to think about what you want your sky and these tree lines to look like. I do want to, to point out that I have left this white area right here. It's dry paper separating my field and my sky. If I let those run together, this dark area is going to run into my field, which is not a big deal because we're going to put a tree line over it anyway. But it's just good practice to kind of keep your, your areas separated, you know, so you feel like you have a little more control. Now I'm going to take a little tiny bit of, just a little bit of red, very light touch of red, um, because I like a little bit of pink in my sky. Maybe that means it's closer to, to sunrise or sunset, something like that, just in some of these areas like that. And it also helps to kind of reflect a little bit of the red from the barn. So I'm going to take a quick second and get some more paper towels. Mine tend to get a little soggy because I clean my brush off a lot. So I'm going to put this over here. There. Now I really like what's happening the way this pink and the gray is running together, but I want some more light areas in my clouds. So I'm going to do the lifting technique that I showed you. I'm just going to clean off my brush. It's completely clean. You can see on the paper towel. And I'm just going to go back and just kind of lift out some areas. So I have really good value range in my clouds in my sky. Just by lifting. This really helps the, the paint to just kind of find its way around the picture and just really blend with the other colors. Just makes it interesting. It's always kind of a surprise too because you're never really sure what it's going to look like or what it's going to do. So I like that. Okay, so I'm just kind of checking to see how wet this is down here. It's still pretty wet. So I think what I'll do is work on my tree line up here. So going to let this area dry and the bottom area dry. So I have the area. Now, like I said before, mine is starting to dry a little bit. If you're more comfortable waiting a few minutes before you try your, your tree line, that's fine. I'm going to go with this dark gray. And what I'm going to do is in this white area right here, I'm just going to start to add just a little bit of a line. Now it's going to blend upwards and it's going to run downwards. And I'm just going to use that when I'm ready to go a little bit darker. I'm just going to add a little bit of more dark in there. And it's always nice to kind of maybe do different brushwork. So I'm turning my brush sideways and using just the flat edge like this for the trees. And where it runs in areas will just make it look more three-dimensional because maybe those are really far in the background. And I'm going to do some of that, just the brush strokes over here on the side. So it kind of looks like tree branches coming over the side like that. But you can use whatever colors speak to you. That's part of what keeps the 
the process kind of spontaneous and fun. You know, maybe you're feeling purple trees in the background. Um, I, I do that a lot, actually. Um, so, and I'm just kind of watching to see what happens, where they're just kind of blending together. And once this is dry, we will go back and do like a firmer line with some of the trees that doesn't run as much, and that will kind of give the depth. We have the ones that are closer to the front and the ones that are further back. So, so far so good. I'm happy with it so far. So, the next thing is I think um, I'd like to add some more colors down here. While it's a little wet, um, so that it's not, you know, really sharp lines. They're still going to run together a little bit. So let's start to brighten this up. Let's start to add some brighter greens, oranges, browns, whatever colors, you know, you're, you're feeling today. Um, you'll notice that we still have not painted the barn. I'm saving that until this area up here is completely dry. And then we'll, we'll start to put that in. So I think what I'll do is just kind of start with kind of a yellow green because I love this yellow green and that's what we are seeing a lot of right now with spring, that bright new green. So I'm just going to add some, some areas in here. And I like to keep it almost like a diagonal line that's coming down across the painting. Um, I think it just adds some perspective instead of having everything go straight across. It adds some perspective and just kind of brings the, the viewer in to the picture. So that's, that's and I'm just adding, and I, what I've done is just mix yellow and green together. And so I'm going to add some more up here. And so you can just kind of go whatever, whatever feels right. So now I'm going to just work with the yellow. And because my palette has got green in my yellow, I'm going to blot it a little bit just to get most of that up. Because I want this yellow to be really kind of bright. So I'm going to add a little bit of orange to it. I'm going to add a little bit of orange to the yellow and just kind of go around some of the green areas that I had here. And they will run together. My paper's still pretty wet, so they're going to all run together. And that's fine. That gives us the, the, the fun and the freedom to just let the paint do what it wants to do. I find so many times when people are learning watercolors, you know, they're, they're used to painting something else usually where they, the paint, wherever they put it, it stays and it doesn't move. And so they want to, they come in with an attitude as I'm going to show this paint where it's supposed to go and, and we're going to fight this out. And that's really not the, the way that watercolor works. You have to work with the water, with the color, and just kind of enjoy what happens. And if something happens that you don't like, well, that's a different issue. You can go back into it. There are techniques and things that you can do to lift and to blot. But I'm going to take a break while some of this is drying and go back over here to where we practiced before and just kind of point out what happened here with the salt. So take a, take a look and see if you practice this. I love that technique. Look how fun that is, where the salt just kind of dissolved and left these really fun, spontaneous patterns. So I'm going to try that over here in the front part where we'll add our grasses. So in order to do that, we're going to go a little darker than I typically do with watercolors at this stage. So I'm going to mix together a green and a brown. We may even add a little bit of blue to it. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. I'm going to add some brown in the green. And then I am going to add this across the front. And I'm just, I've got it moving around in and out. I don't really want it to be um, a straight line. So I'm adding just some areas of this in here. 
And what's really neat when you mix these colors is that you can see where they start to kind of break apart. And now I can see the browns and the greens. And maybe just a little bit of blue in there might be fun too. So let's try that. Like I said, every time I paint this, it looks a little different than it did the last time. But that's okay. It's called creative license. It's something that artists use a lot. So now that I have this a little darker, my um, salt will show up, which is what I want. So I'm going to take and I'm just going to sprinkle my salt on these areas down here at the bottom. And I think I'll go up here too where it's, I added that dark because it will show up up there. There. And we're just going to leave it. Let that sit. So once everybody has gotten that far, we're going to paint our barn. So. Um, but I want to make sure that everybody has gotten to this point because I, I don't want to leave anybody behind when we start to paint the barn. I've got my area up here and I want you to kind of touch and check this area to make sure that it's dry before we start to do the barn. So we're going to be using our red, but we will mix the red with some um, orange and some brown and bring some other colors in. And the great thing about barns is they're not supposed to be perfect. They're, the more ramshackle they look, the more interesting they are, in my opinion. So we don't have to make it look perfect. But I am going to start with the red. And um, I have it pretty watery. I don't want it to be super dark, because we're going to add layers of, of red and orange and colors on here. So I'm just going to start with the main part of the barn, which looks kind of like this. And I'm not going all the way down because my bottom part here is not quite dry. So I'm just leaving a little bit of a line so that I can control. Um, and then I'm going to just kind of kind of up here at an angle, like an off-center angle, and just kind of fill in here. And then you can keep parts of it kind of light and other parts kind of dark. We don't want it to be solid red. We want to have a little bit of value happening in there. And then I'm going to add, once I get this center part, I'm just going to add like a little wing over here. And then the same thing on this side. Just like that. But I just kind of start with the center part there. So while this is still kind of wet, I'm going to, to mix a little bit of orange into my red to just really warm this up a little. But I'm just adding like spots of it. And I'm starting to do my brush strokes with the flat edge of my brush because that kind of creates a little bit of a linear element um, that we can kind of go back into and um, make it look more like boards and barn siding type thing. And I'm just going to let that sit for a second. Um, you can, if you want any areas to be a little bit lighter, you can lift it um, around the edge of the door has a little bit of a white line. If you want, you can just, doesn't need to be bright white. You can just lift that part out with the brush, at the flat edge of the brush. We're going to make that really dark. So when we make that dark, it's really going to pop that light out. So everything looks lighter or darker depending on what it's standing next to. That's what I always say. So I'm just checking in down here where the salt is kind of doing its thing and I really like the way that looks. I like that effect. Very cool. So we ha have my barn on there. I'm not going to keep touching it and fooling with it and painting it and trying to make it look perfect. At this point I have some color, a little bit of value, and a shape that I can work with and I'm just going to let that dry. Um, it does not need to look finished at this point. 
And I'm going to go back into my tree line over here, and my tree's kind of up here. I'm going to add some yellow green because I really want it to look like they're big trees kind of closer and behind the barn. But I'm going to be careful about not actually touching the barn because that way my green paint won't run into my red paint and vice versa. And I'm going to add a little bit more of yellow into my green because I love that yellow green. And so I'm just adding like little dabs of color. That gives the effect of trees and different kinds of trees. Maybe add a little bit of that over top of the, the dark area that I had over here at the side. Just like that. There we go. I like that. Do you guys ever talk to yourselves while you're painting? And say, oh, I like that, or no, you, sh I, you shouldn't have done that. <laughs> What is it that we call those things that we feel like we shouldn't have done? They're happy accidents. I think Bob Ross started that. So I just added some other green, yellow green over here on top of that kind of tree line. And um, I'm just going to kind of fill in some of these areas. It keeps our shadow trees in the background where we did that light wash in the beginning. Kind of keeps those into the, in the background. And um, this kind of brightens up some of the area a little bit. So yeah. So can you do you see the painting starting to materialize now? So what I'm going to do next is that lifting and dragging technique with the grasses. Because you can see here I have a lot of color that has kind of just pooled right here. And so I think it's time to start turning some of this into at creating some texture, which is our um, grasses. So I'm just going to use this brush. You can use um, a skinny one, a skinny pointy one, or a skinny flat one, and just use the flat edge of it. And I'm just going to start back here dragging some of this color where the paint's wet to create my grasses, just like this. And sometimes you think you don't even have that much paint to drag until you actually start doing it. And you're like, oh wow, I had no idea there was that much water and paint on there. So just like this. So you can kind of see, I've got these little tufts of grass, and I'm going to start way down here at the bottom where we went kind of dark and pull those grasses up. This is our foreground. So if these grasses are really big, that's fine. It just kind of shows you where the viewer is standing. So we're all kind of standing over here. This is what's closest. This little triangle of the picture is the closest part to us. So you'll want to keep cleaning off your brush because it will get paint on it and it doesn't lift if it has paint on there. But you can kind of see how my grasses are starting to form here. It's kind of neat. I'm just moving the paint around, the colors. In some places where you move and it's a little, the paint's still kind of wet, it'll, you'll just get a really neat effect. And we will go back and add other colors. But make sure you have your um, grasses going in different directions. This is just really fun. This is something that I could just kind of sit and do. It's very relaxing to me. Just kind of move the paint around. And there really is not a right or wrong way to do this. But you can kind of see, and I'll hold this up a little closer to the camera, 
So you can kind of see the white areas where the grasses were lifted and dragged to some other areas. And you can go up into these areas, even further back in the background, if you want to. But just keep, keep the grasses very small. Just create a little bit of texture back there because we obviously wouldn't want them to be the same size as what's happening down here. But just get some interesting, some cool texture happening there. All right, so I'm going to just leave that, let that dry. We go back and forth between other areas. And so while this is drying, um, my barns, the areas of my barn that I want to work on seem to be kind of dry. So if yours are dry, this area, we can go ahead and add the dark parts to the barn. So I'm going to start with just a light brown. And I'm going to just paint this area, the dark part of the barn, the open barn door right there. Just kind of added that. And I'm using like a, a smaller flat brush for that. And then I'm going to take a little bit of the brown and go up here to the top and add a shadow kind of coming across right here. And you can just pull some of that down through some of the areas. Now that's starting to give our barn some depth and some dimension without adding a whole lot of detail. Just a little bit of a dark shadow underneath the, the top part and the dark part. And then I'm doing that dragging technique again, where I'm just dragging some of that dark paint down. It makes it look a little bit like barn siding. But because we started so light, I have light areas in here too, which gives it that distressed kind of weathered feel that we want. So while my paint is kind of wet in here, I'm going to take some purple and I'm going to get it nice and wet, but not too wet. So I'm going to dry it off on here. I want to be able to control this. And I'm going to add some purple in here and a little bit underneath the peak of the roof right here. That just gives it a little bit of depth, a little bit of shadow. And then I just really like having like a, almost a lifting line coming across, like there's light coming maybe from a window inside the barn somewhere. Um, so I'm just going to go like this. And just kind of let that come through. It just really gives the feel that inside the barn maybe, you know, something is open and that it's not, it's not flat. It gives the barn some more depth and a little more three-dimensional quality. So while that part's drying, I'm going to take a little bit of orange, a little bit of red, and just kind of go down here along the bottom, that part that we left um, dry so that it just really starts to all run together. Not too much, but the orange it's just kind of a nice transitional color there. And then you can lift up so that you control how much of it you have. Like that. So, so far so good. Now you can add as much detail to your barn as you want. I'm going to add like another little kind of a opening up there, the top of the barn. I like having a little barn window up there. But like I said, when you want to make these your own, you want them to be, you know, maybe you remember a barn that you played in or was near you. Whenever we paint, we all go back and draw on our personal experience. And then, you know, you can do like a little um, weather vane at the top if you want. Something like that. So yeah, so I'm happy with my barn. I don't think I'm going to do too much more to the barn. 
it's just kind of a little abstract. And then you'll see where my red started to kind of run up into my greens here, but I like that. It's one of those happy accidents I talked about earlier. You can do some lifting and just kind of let it run together like that. So I think that I need a brighter yellow wash down here in the bottom part of my picture. I really want to brighten some of these areas. So in order to do that, I think a bright yellow is what I need. So I'm not going to worry too much about going a little bit darker and brighter because I have a lot of my other colors on here already. So I'm just going to start to add areas of, of bright yellow, little yellow green, but I am leaving still some of these white areas because that just really looks like where the light is hitting the ground right there. And then you can also we always do a little bit more of the dragging of the grasses um, through some of that yellow if you want. So now I'm going to go back into this area down here and really add some color. It's kind of void of color because we did the dark to drag the grasses. So now's the time when we start to add some colors to it that'll really just pop that area out. So I added the yellow and now I'm going to add some brown. And I'm going to go up here into this tree line and add some of that. And I'm using the edge of my brush so that it kind of looks a little bit like maybe tree trunks or something in the background. My paper's still kind of wet, so it's going to run, and I'm okay with that. It's like that. And I also want some brown down here in these areas. And then when I put it on there, I'm just going to do a little bit of, of the dragging so that it kind of fills in where the grasses were. Just like this. And you can have your grasses kind of bend over a little bit. So maybe it's wheat. Maybe it has that kind of a wheat feel to it. Any of that. So this is really the finishing touches then we are starting to really pull this painting together. Um, if you decide that you need more green areas, a little bit of a darker area. You know, all of, all of that type of thing is, is where we're at right now. Really pulling this painting together. So I'm putting color on there. I'm using the edge of my brush to just kind of move it around a little bit so that it looks like there are grasses, but they're, they're really soft because of the, the wet paper and all of the color. They're just, it's really blending together nicely. So I'm going to add a little orange just because orange is fun in here. Just kind of mix that around, you know, and any areas that you have maybe where the salt looked really great, um, just work around those, you know. Anything that has happened so far that really works for you and that you really like, just um, keep going. There we go. So we're just kind of um, adding some more color to the foreground in here and um, just pulling it through so that um, it looks like grasses and we get some really interesting textures. And this is the part where I really start to get absorbed in what I'm doing. 
And I'm gonna add a little bit more yellow, I think, in here. So what I am doing is just adding some more yellow, my grasses on here, and um, just letting everything kind of flow, blend together. But in order to put the final, final touches on this, it's going to need to be a little drier down here at the bottom. I have a lot of color and things happening. I'm pretty happy with the barn um, back in the back and the tree line. But I want a little more detail in the front. And so it's hard to paint detail on wet paper. The paper has to be a little dry. And I have found that as people get, if they're starting to get frustrated, that's when they add more and more and more color because it's almost like they're trying to cover something up. And that does not work with watercolor. Then it just starts to look overworked and like you had an area you really didn't like. So just the best thing to do is let it dry completely if you're getting to that point and then go back um, and work on it once it's completely dry. Or keep a piece like this going and go back into that and practice work on something else while it's drying. So what I'm going to do now is add, my paper is still kind of wet, but there's some areas that are a little dry. So I'm gonna mix some red and brown together. And I'm going to add just a little bit of a detail with some of these grasses, just kind of over top of this area. And where it's wet, it's going to blend, but the areas that are dry, it should be fine. It's like that. So you can add as much of that or as little of that as you want. And I think um, what I would do here once this was completely dry is I would add some of that detail right over this area right here, but it's still kind of wet for me to do that. Um, but so it would look like this area because this is dry right here. Like that. So I'm going to do a little bit of splatter like I had, I had um, shown you before with the red. And then I think we'll be um, pretty close to being finished. And like I said, you can go back and add whatever you want. So I'm just going to take um, my brush and I'm dipping it in the, the wet red watercolor paint and just kind of twirling it back and forth. And so I'm going to dip it in the water and just kind of tap off a little bit of the extra. Hold my finger out like I'm pointing at someone and just tap lightly right over top of that. And it might be hard for you to see the, the red splatters. I'm going to do a little bit more of that. But that just is kind of a, a really fun, neat effect. And you can do that with orange, and then you can go back um, when it's dry and maybe turn some of those little splatters into um, flowers and um, things like that in the foreground. So I hope that you can look at your painting and hopefully you love the entire thing. But if you don't, you can find some little areas in it that you just really like, where everything kind of came together and it worked together really well. So um, for me, I'd have to say I really like my barn area up here. I would like the grass area once it's dry and I could do a little more detail. And so just find areas that worked and then bring that into your next painting. Try to remember how you created that and try that technique again and try it in your, um, in your next painting. You have a couple sheets of watercolor paper, so you can try it again. Or take, this is a really fun exercise, Take your practice sheet and turn it into a painting of some sort. Um, and that's a lot of fun too. Thank you again so much for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the experience and you enjoyed painting together. And again, please visit our website for information on more opportunities for self-care activities.